Hi everyone and welcome to this week's tutorial where I'll be showing you how to create this kinetic typographic textured background all in After Effects. If you like this video please hit the like button and make sure you hit the subscribe button to see my weekly tutorials on YouTube. Cool, let's jump straight in. Okay, so I'm going to create the word texture in the middle of the screen to start with. So I'm going to drag my text box out and to get my text box I've pressed Command T and I'm going to write in texture. And for this tutorial I'm using Source Code Pro, um, bold, and the font size at 50 and my tracking at 200. And if I move that up and down, you can see it's just spreading the text out. Cool, so once I'm happy with how that text looks, I want to repeat that across the screen. So I'm gonna add a couple of spaces after this word. I'm gonna press Command A to highlight all the text, Command C to copy it, my right arrow to go to the end of it, and then Command V to paste it. And I'm just gonna keep pressing Command V until this text box is filled. Okay, so that should be enough. Let's align that into the middle. And I'm gonna move my anchor point to the middle as well. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit to see how much text there is either side. And I think actually we want it to be a little bit longer. So I'm gonna drag the text box out a little bit and I'm gonna to go to the end of all these um, words and I'm gonna press Command V a couple more times. Click the layer and then let's see. Yeah, that's quite long. So let's align this to the left side of the screen here. Uh, we want to duplicate this layer until it fills the whole screen. So let's start doing that. Cool, so once I've duplicated it to fill this whole screen, we want to make sure that that's aligned properly. So let's highlight all of them by pressing Command A, going to our align window here, and distributing the layers vertically. Cool, and let's just make sure that's, that's in the middle. So I'm gonna zoom in, Command plus, press the quote button to bring up my title safe guide. That will show me this plus in the middle. And if I move to the right, once I've got them all highlighted, just move these across so they hit the middle and then we can align it vertically to make sure that that middle one is actually in the middle of the screen. Cool, so I'm gonna hit option question mark and that's gonna show me the whole screen. And now we've got these perfectly aligned in the space, we want to start animating them all. So I'm gonna move these back to the left hand side and I'm gonna select every other layer because we want them to be sliding in opposite directions. Okay, for the purpose of this, just so we can see what layers are moving to the right and what layers are moving to the left, I'm going to change the color code here by just clicking it and I'm gonna choose purple, no, maybe yellow, so that it really stands out against um, the red. Okay, so now we want to connect all these bottom layers to one parent that will do all the animation work for the others. So I've highlighted all the red ones apart from this top one and I'm gonna pick whip them all to that top layer. Once I've parented the red layers to that top one, I'm gonna do the same for the yellow layers. So I'm gonna highlight them all and pick whip them to that top one. Now I'm gonna get the position keyframe for both of these top layers here. So I'm gonna press option P and then I'm gonna to scroll to the end of 10 seconds here and I'm going to push these all to the right. So they're all moving because they're all parents to either the yellow, top yellow one or the top red one. Cool, so once I've done that, I actually wanna reverse this yellow one so they're not all moving in the same direction. If I click on position, and that highlights both my keyframes there, um, and I right click on the keyframe, I go down to keyframe assistant, and then I'm gonna press time reverse layers. So when I press play, they're moving at exactly the same speed, um, but just in different directions. So now that we've done the basic animation for these layers, I want to pre-compose them all. So I'm gonna highlight them all by pressing Command A, and then I'm gonna press Command Shift C for my pre-compose window to come up, and I'm gonna call this Texture Text Full. Hit OK. So in order to get the wavy look and feel to this, we're gonna add a wave layer um, effect to this. So I'm going to go to my effects panel here and I'm going to type in wave and I'm going to double click wave warp with the layer highlighted and it will get put straight on it. Of course you can also grab that layer and put it straight on there as well if you wanted to. 
Okay, so I'm going to play around with these settings a little bit to make these waves a bit wider. So I'm going to play with the width and I'm just going to bring that out by quite a bit. Yeah, I'm going to drop the height down slightly to about seven. I'm going to enlarge this area because we want it to rotate in 3D space slightly. So it feels like it's not just flat on the screen, but it's just slightly offset. So I'm going to just hold down shift and then drag these corners out to make it slightly bigger. And then I'm going to turn it into a 3D object by pressing this button here. Then if I hit my R button, it shows me all of my rotation options here. And I want to rotate it slightly in the X space to get that sort of tilt. And then I want to rotate it slightly in the Z position to get this sort of slanted look to it. And I'm just going to move it up slightly so that the whole screen is covered. Actually, maybe I want it tilted a bit more and more that way. Okay, and I think that's actually moving maybe a bit too quickly. So I'm actually gonna go into this file here and I'm going to just stretch it out a little bit. So I'm gonna press Command K and that's gonna bring up my composition settings and I'm gonna extend this out to 20 seconds. I'm going to highlight all these layers again and go to the end of my timeline with my playhead and then press option square bracket. Take the top two layers with the keyframes on and highlight those keyframes and just drag those to the end. So if I go back into this one and let's have a look at what speed that is now. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. And I actually want this to rotate as it's animating. So let's add some keyframes to the rotation. So I'm going to rotate it for, um, on the Z axis. And I'm gonna to go to about three seconds and I'm gonna put in plus seven. And let's see what that looks like. Um, I think, yeah, I'm gonna make this a little bit quicker. So let's move that to two seconds. And then I'm going to go to four seconds and I'm going to copy that first keyframe, command C and then command V to paste it at four seconds. And then I'm going to highlight this and go to my graph editor. I'm just going to pull these handles in so it sort of eases in and out as it animates from one side to the other. And then go back to my timeline and I'm going to add a expression in here to, so it loops out for the rest of the duration of this timeline. So if I uh, hold down option and then hit this stopwatch and I'm going to type in loop and it comes up with the rest of the expression for me. So I'm going to press loop out here, double click it and then inside the brackets I'm going to put quote and cycle so that now it will loop out for as long as the timeline lasts. Okay, so now that we've got this set up, I want to make it a little bit interesting by adding some textures to this background. So first off, I'm gonna add a sort of grunge texture to the background of this to help with the texture. So I'm gonna bring this image in and you can find whichever you, image you like on the internet to do the same. Um, and I'm gonna drag this in underneath and bring it down slightly. And this is maybe a bit too light in the background for me. So I'm going to darken it slightly by adding a curve effect to this. So I'm going to go to my effects panel. I'm going to type in curve and I'm going to double click that with my layer highlighted. And I'm going to go to my curve graph here and I'm going to make it slightly darker. So I've clicked here and bring it down. In fact, I'm going to bring that bit up and then bring this bit down to Add some more contrast in there. And the way we make this animate is by adding an expression to the position. So I'm going to go to my stopwatch and I'm going to hold down Alt and click it. Um, and I'm going to use this expression, which I'll put in the um, description of the video for you all and a link to where I found it as well. So all this expression does is tells the layer to move randomly around the around the composition um, but within this width and within this height. So it's saying here a minimum of 
0.1 width um, and a minimum of 0.1 height and a maximum of 0.9 width and a 0.9 height. So if we've got a small res image and it's moving quite a lot all over the place, then we'll want to reduce these numbers down. But if I press play, and I'm gonna turn off my text layer for now, just so you can see what's going on here. And you can see that it's randomly moving around. But if I was to change these um, numbers here, so let's put say four, and six for both height and width because it's a square image and I press play you can see it's moving around a lot less I'm going to press back on those numbers and I'm just going to go to the hold time so it's a really slow animation at the moment and we want to speed that up so if I reduce this number down to say two um, have a look at what that looks like. You can see it's moving a lot quicker. We could even go down to one and it's going a bit crazy there. So let's go, we can do one five. So it's not quite two. Cool, and then we've instantly got an animation um, added to this still image. And if I turn the text back on again, so it's starting to come together quite a little bit there. The text for me is standing out quite harshly against the background. So we wanna blend it in a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add um, some blur to it. So I've typed in blur, I'm gonna get some Gaussian blur. And let's try Yeah, four I think is probably enough. And then I want to blend it all together by adding an adjustment layer. So I've right clicked on my mouse and I go to new adjustment layer and I'm gonna type in noise. Double click on that. I'm gonna not use color noise for this and I'm just gonna bring this up. I think 20 is a good number if I zoom in. Let's try 30 and zoom out. Maybe that's a bit too much. Let's go for 25. And what happens if we turn up the blur a little bit? What mixing the blur and the noise together, it creates this kind of fuzzy texture towards the text. Um, which helps it bleed into the background a little bit better rather than it just being straight lines from the text. So if I turn off the blur and the noise layer, you can see that it doesn't quite have that same blending effect as when you have those two effects together. So I'm gonna turn it back on. The rotation is easing in a bit too much, I think. So I'm just gonna reduce my graph handles like this. And I'm going to do that for either side as well so that they match. Okay, so I'm going to carry on um, designing this. So I want to add a slight uh, vignette around the edges just to give it a, a bit more depth and texture. So I'm going to right click, go to new solid, and I want um, a solid the same size as this comp, which automatically comes up and I want it to be black. So I'm going to hit okay. And then I'm going to get my shape tool up um, so I go up to my shape tool up here, I'm gonna hold, press and hold it and go to the ellipse tool. And I'm gonna create um, an ellipse that's roughly the size of the screen. You double click the mask around the edge just to drag it out and match the sizes, but with a bit of a space around it. Then I'm gonna to go to my mask settings on the solid layer and I'm going to invert it. And then I'm going to just play around with the feathering. Cool, I think that should be all right. And then I'm gonna to go to overlay and see what that looks like. And put this underneath noise as well. Uh,
Okay, yeah, I think I'm gonna put on multiply and then I'm just going to drop the opacity slightly. So let's say 70. Um, and now I really wanna highlight the fact that it's on a 3D space. So I'm gonna add some um, blur to this image, but only in the middle. So it feels like um, a real camera that might have this bit and this bit out of focus. So I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer and I'm gonna add some more blur to it. So get my gauge and blur, put that on, and I'm gonna put it up quite high to about 40 and make the size of the layer quite a bit bigger. Okay, and so before I connect this to the text layer, I'm going to add a um, mask to it. So I'm gonna hit the Q button, which brings up my shape tool. If I hit it a few times, you can see it changing and, and going through the different shapes there is, and I want the rectangle one. So I'm just gonna create a mask in the middle like this, and I'm gonna invert it. And I'm gonna play around with the feathering again. Bring this up quite a bit. And actually I'm gonna expand the mask out Drop this down a bit. Yeah, that's looking quite nice. So now I want to connect this one to my text layer. So I'm going to turn it into a 3D object. I'm gonna hold down shift as I click and drag the pick whip to the text layer. And that will match the exact position and location of that text layer because I've held down shift. I just need it to nudge it up a little bit and probably make it a tad bigger just to make sure it fills all the spaces so now as the text moves so does that blur layer and one last thing i'm just going to put that underneath the noise layer to just get a bit more of an interesting texture and i think i might just knock back that blur a tad Maybe a little bit more. And that's it. That's how you make this textured kinetic typographic background. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button and make sure you hit the subscribe button to check out more of my videos in the future.